Well, it's that time of year. Time to go through my favorite metal albums of 2020. Thankfully, a lot of great metal albums came out this year, both from classic and modern bands. So I'll be going through my list, as well as through some honorable mentions, and of course, some of the albums that other people are praising, just to give you a nice rounded view of 2020 in metal in general. All right, my top 10 metal albums of 2020, coming up. Well, it's been a hell of a year, to put it mildly, with a lot of tours being canceled worldwide. It's amazing that we even got albums at all. I mean, that's how the business works. You put on an album and then you go on tour. So without those tours, a lot of bands are kind of hurting for money, which reminds me, support your local record stores, buy albums, and buy band merch. That's a big one, because all these bands that didn't get to go on a tour are stuck with their merch. and. They don't have any money as a result, so definitely think about buying band merch. It's kind of a big deal. So as for the albums I'll be discussing here, I just want to go through a few points. Consider these the game rules of this video. Uh, the first of which is that some of my favorites might have changed from the first time I talked about some of these albums. I did talk about them in various episodes of Vinyl Hall, so keep in mind that my favorites might have changed. It's a thing. You have an album for you know many, many months, yeah, you change your mind a little bit. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, I just want to point out the subjectivity of this top 10 coming up. Obviously, uh, my list is not going to be your list. Keep that in mind in the comments. In fact, if you have your own top 10 list, feel free to leave it in the comments. But arguing your subjective tastes is not going to fly, and I'm not going to care anyways. So there you go. Also, just to let you know, I didn't watch any other metal YouTubers top 10 list yet. Um, I like to keep away from that until I finish my own, um, just to avoid any accusations of groupthink or drinking the Kool-Aid or whatever you want. So, uh, again, this is my list and not yours or anyone else's. So, there you go. So, before I get to the actual top 10, I want to go through my honorable mentions. These are 2020 album releases that basically just fell off the top spots, but still are very much worth checking out. Starting off with Frail, this is their first full-length LP called 1692. It's doom metal with some haunting female vocals. Favorites are Gods of No Faith and Darker Than Black. Of course, I also have to mention Trypticon with the Metropole Orchest. This is Requiem. Uh, this is a product of ex-Celtic Frost member Tom G. Warrior. Uh, it's live orchestral material with metal. It's also got a bit of prog and it's got a bit of gothiness to it. Uh, great little record. My favorite is basically the entire album. Also in 2020, we got the third album from Lucifer, intuitively titled Three. Of course, this is the band that ex the Oath singer Johanna Sedanis formed. Uh, great little album, occult rock, for those of you who don't know. Uh, favorites include Ghosts, Leather Demon, and Flanked by Snakes. Next, of course, is Sirith Ungle with their album Forever Black. This is their fifth studio album. Uh, doom metal meets traditional metal and hard rock. Favorites include Legions Arise and Fractus Promissum. Of course, you should also check out the sixth studio album from Warbringer. This is Weapons of Tomorrow, great American thrash metal. Uh, my favorites include The Black Hand Reaches Out, Defiance of Fate, and Glorious End. Of course, I should mention Vader. This is their 16th studio album entitled Solitude and Madness, great death thrash from Poland. Uh, favorites include Into Oblivion, Incineration of the Gods, and Emptiness. And of course, rounding things off with a bit of American blackened speed metal. This is Midnight with Rebirth by Blasphemy. Great record, fourth album for this band. Uh, a couple favorites include Escape the Grave and Curse Possessions. As for my top 10 metal albums of 2020, a uh, breakdown of bands will be five from America, three from England, one from Canada, and one from Sweden. Genre breakdown will consist of four thrash bands, three death, two doom, and one power. And sorry to the black metal fans out there, black metal just isn't my bag, so I don't really cover it all that much. Uh, maybe I'll get into it in later years, but it's just not here. And also, two of these top 10 albums are being discussed by me for the first time. They haven't made it to a vinyl haul yet or anything like that, so this should be fun. And with that, let's get to the list. My number 10 choice comes from a Canadian death metal band that's gone through some changes over the decades, but really put out a great album in 2020. Unfortunately, it's an album that got kind of ignored by a lot of the metal vinyl community. Not really sure why. That album is Unconquered, by Cataclysm. 
this is their 14th studio album. Uh, they've definitely gone through some changes, as I mentioned before. They started out as pure death metal, and they kind of moved into a more melodic form of death metal. Now they're pretty aggressive. Uh, there's a lot of aggression here, and uh, they still have some melody and groove. I think some people expected that in their mid-career, but it's a pretty angry album overall. And I gotta tell you, I really dig the Nietzsche quote on the insert here that says, without music, life would be a mistake. Totally true. Favorites on this one include Focused to Destroy You, The Way Back Home, Icarus Falling, and When It's Over. Also, there are videos for The Kill Shot and Underneath the Scars. So if you can get past the modern, low-tuned chug factor on this album, I think you'd dig the songwriting on it. It's pretty good, it's deep at times, and of course, there's a lot of anger here. Did I happen to mention this is an angry album? It's angry. So coming in at number 10 is Unconquered by Cataclysm. At number 9 comes a classic U.S. power metal band. Uh, they put out their 13th studio album in 2020. Sadly, I feel like this album is also getting a bit overlooked, which is really a crime because this is Vicious Rumors with Celebration Decay. A few folks involved in this album are worth mentioning. First is new vocalist Nick Courtney. Amazing, powerful vocalist here. Has some nods to Bruce Dickinson in his voice, which is kind of fun. Also playing guest bass is Greg Christian. Uh, you might remember him from Testament. He's their ex-bass player. Uh, he brings a little bit of thrashiness to the production. And speaking of production, uh, the producer is Juan Urtiega. He's done albums for both Testament and Exodus. So if you're hearing that kind of production sound, that's probably why. Favorites on this album include the title track, of course, also Any Last Words, uh, Cold Blooded, and Collision Course Disaster. Uh, there are some music videos on this album, uh, one for the title track, also one for Pulse of the Dead, Asylum of Blood, and Death Eternal. Again, great record, and one I'm just not hearing enough about. Anyways, at number nine, this is Celebration Decay by Vicious Rumors. My number eight choice is a real step up from this American thrash metal band's previous four albums in terms of musicality, production, and of course the amazing cover art. This is Havoc with Five. So as many of you who have heard this album already know, there's a bit of a wink and nod to Metallica, a couple of them actually on this album. Uh, the intro of this album has a slight flavor of Blackened. That's not the only Injustice for All reference on this record. Also, later in the album, there's a bit of Eye of the Beholder going on. So that's kind of interesting. Also a nice addition here is their new bass player, Brandon Bruce. He's pretty much all over this record, and he really adds some texture to what's going on here. He's definitely a good addition. Favorites on this album include Ritual of the Mind, Parapsychism, and Merchants of Death. There are also some music videos here for Post-Truth Era, Fear Campaign, and of course, Phantom Force. And I'll be honest here, I wasn't really excited about the album before this. I was conformicide, just didn't think it measured up from the album before it. But this album is a true return to form for this band, and then some. It's a great album, fantastic stuff. So coming in at number 8 is 5 by Havoc. At number 7 is a relatively recent discovery for me. Uh, this is Swedish epic doom metal, third album for this band. You might know them better as Sorcerer with Lamenting of the Innocent. So this album shows the band continuing with their epic doom sound, but also building on it. Of course, the centerpiece in this band is the vocalist, Enders Engberg. Amazing voice. Sounds like a modern-day Tony Martin. Tony Martin, of course, ex-Black Sabbath singer. Amazing vocalist that kind of got ignored in the annals of heavy metal. Annals. Great word. Uh, powerful vocalist, Engberg is. Of course, Engberg isn't the only vocalist on this album. Uh, there's some guest vocals by Johan Linguist of Candlemass. Uh, they do uh, sort of back and forth on this track, Deliverance. Very much recommended. Four tracks on this album that stand out as being my very favorites. Of course, The Hammer of Witches, pretty amazing track. Instatorus is great. Age of the Damned and Path to Perdition. If you're looking for music videos off of this, there are nine of them. Yes? nine music videos, so if you want to get a sampling of the album that way, you're not going to be lacking for selection. So it's a slightly darker and more aggressive album than the one right before it, but I kind of like it that way. Anyways, at number seven, this is Sorcerer with Lamenting of the Innocent. My number six choice might be a bit controversial for some of you more conservative metal fans. Throughout the 16 albums this band has put out, this British 
death metal band. Uh, they've incorporated a number of styles, uh, gothic rock and doom being the two more obvious. But despite the division of opinions, I still have no qualms about Obsidian by Paradise Lost. Now, a lot of the people who've talked about this album in 2020 have talked about it being more of a grower than a shower, but I gotta tell you, I love this album from the get-go. I like the mix of styles here. I like that they visit some of their past in some of these tracks. I also really didn't have much of a problem in the 1990s with them switching away from being a purely death metal band and adding those elements. In fact, I kind of dig that. Of course, speaking of influences, the band does show those on this record. Um, the intro to Forsaken is definitely Shades of Sisters of Mercy, uh, or thinking this corrosion, of course. Also, they've admitted to some typo-negative worship. Faint hints of that on this record as well, though not too heavy-handed with it. I could just say that all of these songs are my favorites, but if you put a gun to my head, I'm definitely going to pick Fall from Grace, as well as Forsaken and Ending Days. Uh, there are three music videos from this album uh, for Darker Thoughts, Fall from Grace, and Ghosts. So check those out. The record definitely turns up the goth dial a touch more than maybe more immediate past offerings, especially in the vocals. I guess it's no secret that Nick and Greg love the gothic rock, and it's in here a little bit. Um, I was debating about putting this record actually a bit higher in my list, but there are five other amazing albums coming, so here it stays. So at number six is Paradise Lost with Obsidian. My number five choice was rather tough. It was a bit of a tie between this and the Paradise Lost album. Um, but what broke that tie was the return of this band's classic singer, uh, the revived chemistry as a result of his return, and of course, those great tracks. Of course, I'm talking about Benediction with their latest album, Scriptures. This is the eighth studio album for this British death metal band. And before I get to the rest of it, I just wanted to talk about the gatefold a little bit. Um, what's really great about this is Geo's picture over here. Uh, it clearly doesn't match the others. Uh, you can see there's a lot of high contrast going on in the other four. These are probably pulled from live shots. Geo's looks more like it was shot at Olin Mills Portrait Studios. I mean, they have the sepia tone to match Dave, but incredible. Uh, but don't count Geo out. He's an amazing drummer. Him and both new bass player Daniel Bate. Amazing rhythm section. Really add to this band. Got some favorites on this album, of course. Uh, the Crooked Man is probably one of my very favorites. Of course, Storm Crow, uh, In Our Hands, The Scars, and Embrace the Kill. Uh, there are some music videos off this album. Iterations of I is one, Storm Crow, and Rabid Carnality, if you're looking for those. I should also mention another track, Progenitors of a New Paradigm, with guest vocalist Cam Lee. Cam Lee, of course, from Massacre fame. Um, great stuff. You should check that track out. Now, I did notice a difference in the cover art between the U.S. and European versions. This one is the European version, by the way. And this one is way more saturated color-wise. I really like it a lot more. I saw the U.S. cover as well. It's a tiny bit bled out. Maybe not enough for most people to notice. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to that. But yeah, I prefer this one. So with better riffs and better production, and did I mention Dave's back? Benediction have truly returned to Rubicon, if you will. So at number five is Benediction with Scriptures. My fourth place choice is also the fourth album for this American technical thrash metal band, an album that took over a decade to come out. Now, was it worth the wait? Of course it was. And that's why my number four choice is Empire of the Blind from Heathen. Now, of course, Heathen is that band from the classic Bay Area thrash scene of the 1980s that really didn't get the accolades of its other scene mates, such as Testament and Exodus. But they put out some quality albums over the years albeit four albums, and this is obviously no exception. Favorites on this album include the title track, as well as The Blight, Blood to be Let, and The Gods Divide. Also, I should mention the track A Fine Red Mist. It's an instrumental. Uh, there are guest soloists on this, guitar solos to be precise, from Gary Holt and Rick Hunolt, the H-Team from Exodus. Um, actually, one from Exodus, one formerly from Exodus, as we know. And if you're looking for music videos, there are now four of them since I last reported on this album. Uh, there are ones for The Blight, Empire of the Blind, In Black, and Sun in My Hand. So some folks are saying that this album falls short of their previous album, that's 2010's The Evolution of Chaos. I would disagree. I think this album stands alongside that record in many ways and exceeds it in others. So at number four is Heathen with Empire of the Blind. At number three is a relatively new discovery for me in the realm of melodic death metal. Uh, this band's been around for nine albums, but it definitely was their recent lineup as well as their recent release that caught my attention. That album is Verminous by The Black Dahlia Murder. 
What's immediately obvious on this record is that the band has evolved a little bit. Songs are a little bit longer, there's a little bit more variety, adding a bit of depth and breathing room to the music. I mean, it's still the Black Dahlia murder, and they have kept all the best parts, but they also have matured a bit. Of course, I have some favorites on this album. I would definitely go to Removal of the Oaken Steak, also the Leather Apron Scorn, and the Wereworms Feast. Great tracks, all three of them. Also, there are two music videos from this album. Uh, there's one for Verminous, as well as Removal of the Oaken Steak. And I'll be honest, I really wasn't into their pre-2017 work all that much. I think with the addition of guitarist Brandon Ellis, he's pushed this band, and maybe the band itself has pushed this band, to a new level, a more mature level with their music. So I kind of dig where they are now. So my choice for number three is Verminous by The Black Dahlia Murder. My number two choice was even a bit of a surprise to me, not because it isn't a great album, but it really did get better and better with repeated listenings. Uh, of course, this British thrash band has gone through some changes since their early days in the 1980s, but this album is just a work of art, or what Darcy Six Strings would call a thrasher piece. Yes, of course, I am talking about Onslaught with Generation Antichrist. Now, this band has certainly come a long way from their lo-fi leanings back in 1985 when they put out Power From Hell. Um, in the interim, they've had seven vocalists. They also had a comeback in the mid-aughts. And I like the old stuff, but I definitely love where they've come to in 2020. Also, I wanted to do just a quick plug for their record label. It's AFM Records, great label out of Germany. They put out some great newer albums for bands such as Anvil and Flotsam & Jetsam, UDO, Ross the Boss. Definitely check them out when you have a chance. Of course, I don't think my favorites have really changed all that much since I first talked about this album on Vinyl Hall. I definitely love Strike Fast, Strike Hard, one of my favorites. Love the title track, and I do love All Seeing Eye as well. Uh, there are two music videos off this album, in case you haven't seen them. There's one for Bow Down to the Clowns, and there's one for Religious Suicide. Check those out. So with some bang-worthy tracks and fantastic vocals from new singer Dave Garnett, you should not ignore this record. So coming in at number two is Generation Antichrist by Onslaught. So my number one album of 2020 might not be much of a surprise to you. In fact, I'm going to assume that this album is number one on a number of people's lists. And for good reason. It's a great album. I think it's an improvement from their last album, for sure. Hailing from the San Francisco Bay Area, this band pretty much ushered in the second wave of thrash metal back in 1987 with their debut album. Um, definitely one of those bands that probably should be in the big four. I would definitely kick out at least one band, maybe even two, to make room for this one. Of course, I'm talking about the 13th studio album from Testament. This is Titans of Creation. The album comes out four years after their previous record, Brotherhood of the Snake, which got some mixed reviews, mostly for being a tad samey. Can't say that about Titans, however. There's quite a bit of variety on this one. Favorites, tracks to check out, whatever you want to call them, Children of the Next Level, of course, Night of the Witch, uh, Symptoms, probably my favorite song on here, and Curse of Osiris. There are two music videos, of course, from this album for Children of the Next Level and Night of the Witch. Of course, as others have said about the closing track, it's the instrumental known as Catacombs. I'm not really sure it was necessary. I don't hate it, and I don't think it would be solved by putting it at the beginning of the record like other people have said. I just don't think it was entirely necessary. Not entirely surprising, Exodus vocalist Steve Sousa has partial writing credit on this album uh, for the song False Prophet, and that's been going on for a little while now. Uh, Sousa and Chuck Billy have been writing lyrics probably since the formation of Damnation, which he's all over, but also on Dark Roots of Earth. Um, you might remember Steve Sousa was the original vocalist for this band back when it was known as Legacy, so he goes back a ways with this band. So while this record has its haters out there, calling it predictable and mediocre, that's a load of bunk. This is an amazing album. Uh, you've got classic testament along with more modern metal sensibilities. I also love hearing the evolution of Skullnick and Peterson as guitar players, as well as the ferocity of Chuck Billy's vocals. All oh, just really incredible. Anyone who hates this album, I'm not on board with that. This one's really good. So my number one metal album of 2020 is Titans of Creation, by Testament. So I also want to briefly go through the albums of 2020 that I haven't bought yet, but that others are praising. So let's go through those quickly. First up is the second full-length album from Hellripper. This is The Affair of the Poisons. 
Blackened Speed Metal from James McBain. Yes, it's a one-man band. Uh, pretty cool album. I haven't picked it up yet because it's been pretty expensive for us Americans. Uh, I think they need some more distribution for this album in my country, and then maybe the price will come down and I can pick it up. Also, the sixth full-length album from Intronaut. This is Fluid Existential Inversions. It is progressive post-metal. I'm not into it, but I know some of you are, so check it out if interested. Next up is a Telemark EP from Ishan. Ishan, of course, from Emperor. This is his experimental metal project. Uh, metal and other things, of course. He did put out another EP in 2020 called Pharaohs, and I really wouldn't recommend that one. It's not all that interesting. Um, as for Telemark, it is a bit weird. I would definitely check it out on YouTube or streaming services before you buy it. But I dig it, and I'd probably pick it up. Also, as I mentioned, Armored Saint with Punching the Sky. This is their ninth studio album. They're an American traditional metal band, of course. They've been around for quite a while. Um, a lot of people dig this album. I'm kind of so-so with it. Maybe you haven't heard it enough or whatnot, but they're talking about it, and some people will put this very high on their list. So you should probably check it out. Why not? And wrapping up the 2020 albums that other people are talking about, I should mention the 14th studio album from My Dying Bride. This is The Ghost of Orion. It's English Death Doom. Um, I've been on the fence a little bit with this band. I think some of their releases are kind of lackluster, and some are pretty good. This one's actually catching my attention, so I'm probably going to get it. And those are my top 10 metal albums of 2020. Well, that and some other releases in 2020 as well that you should check out. Um, I do go more into depth on my top 10 choices in various episodes of Vinyl Hall. I'll leave a playlist to that show in this video. Go check those out. But what did you think about the list? Again, this is my list, but maybe you've got your own. Definitely post that and anything else relevant in the comments below. I'm also looking forward to seeing a lot of the top 10, top 20, top 40 metal albums of 2020 lists that other people in the vinyl community are doing here on YouTube. Um, again, I held off watching all of those until I made this, so no one's list influenced my own. And of course, if you've watched YouTube long enough, you know this is the part where I say like, subscribe, and share. This is the Accusation Network. I do metal vinyl collecting videos at least once a week. Sometimes I even do them twice a week. Definitely check out the playlist, check out the videos, do it. And of course, thank you to everyone out there for watching all of these videos I've done through the last year. I also appreciate your likes and your comments, your subscriptions, of course. I'm definitely looking forward to doing more videos in 2021. So until then, thanks for watching and ever forward. <laughs>